Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of The Night Owl, a Korean dramatic thriller from 2022. Set in the year 1645, Kyung Soo is blind but has excellent acupuncture skills. He enters the palace after being recognized for his talents. Around that time, Crown Prince So Hyun, who was taken hostage by the Qing dynasty, returns to Korea after eight years. Then, one night, Kyung Soo, who can see faintly in the dark, witnesses a murder. As he tries to tell the truth, bigger secrets and conspiracies are revealed, putting his life at risk. So the Night Owl has a number of positive elements. For one, we have a pretty likable protagonist who is also rather sympathetic. You know, he's responsible for raising and treating his 10-year-old little brother who has a breathing condition, which is the primary reason why he wanted a position within the palace. You know, it'll give him the ability to treat or possibly cure the kid's ailments. Now, our main character does have some talents, despite being mostly blind. You know, as the plot synopsis mentioned, he's very good at acupuncture, but he also has a hidden ability um, that was referenced in the synopsis as well. He cannot see anything that in like brightly lit rooms or in the daytime. He's effectively blind. But he can see fairly well in dimly lit environments. So if he's in a darkened room uh, or simply walking around at nighttime, he can act similarly to someone who's not sight impaired. And that's one of the more unique aspects of the film. So the overall story, pretty common, and this is leisurely paced for the most part until the dangers start ramping up, which is about near the midpoint. You know, the opening act kind of focuses on our protagonist as he slowly adapts to palace life, how to practice acupuncture within the royal clinic. And there's like a little kid who's in the palace who's kind of a jerk uh, to him at first, but our protagonist kindly puts the kid in his place a few times. I did like the scene where he has to organize a bunch of herbs like this little kid like throws a bunch of herbs at him thinking a blind guy can't do it but of course he does it at nighttime and you can see he could see well enough to get it done so i kind of like that that sequence of events because the kid shows up the next day and he's like completely shocked you know but the royal conflicts and relationships are set up early and they do pay off later on so early on this is kind of fairly relaxing low-key stuff but the conflicts that emerge are quite good. You know, much of the second half has like a solid slow burn suspense to it. And there's like a constant sense of danger. Our main character does witness certain events and immoral acts such as murder um, during a few of the nighttime scenes. And during these scenes, this is, this is what makes the film interesting, is that he needs to act like he still can't see anything. You know what I mean? Because he's only blind when there's bright lights. So he might be witnessing something happening. And even though he can see, he has to act like he usually does when he doesn't see. So it's kind of real interesting dynamics during those scenes. Um, and uh, all the other characters wrongly assume that he can't see what's going on. And he can't identify like what's happening exactly or who's doing it. So they feel like he's not much of a threat. But it creates situations where... If he doesn't react appropriately, or shall I say, if he if he makes sure that he doesn't react to what's going on, because he really shouldn't if he was blind, the vi the vi uh, the villains might come after him if they uh, if they find out his secret. So it's a pretty neat idea, and the film executes it quite well. And uh, you know, there's some I guess uh, morals in the film during the you know the last section of the film that come out, where you know, do you act or do you do you stay in the shadows? You know what I mean? Do you put yourself on the line to do what's right? Or do you just kind of fade back and just, you know, protect yourself? So there's there's a, a lot of good stuff here, I think. Production values are effective. Nothing excessive. Uh, South Korea, I think, has tons of sets and locales like this all over the place. Because they do shoot a lot of historical films and TV shows. So, you know, it's just, this just looks like a, a typical good quality a period, uh, you know, locale or set, you know, that they would typically use. Performances are good. Uh, so overall, I would think that 
if you're just looking for like a good quality Korean film from recent years, The Night Owl is a good choice. It's good. I think most people will enjoy it. And it's currently available streaming on YouTube and Amazon. And, and as always, folks, I'll see you next time.